Welcome to the British High School of Art and Design. Uh, my name is Gabriela Boyandu and I'm the program leader for the Foundation Diploma in Art and Design. Right, so in terms of portfolio, if um, somebody's interested in joining us and they're interested in coming for an interview, we expect them to bring an A1 portfolio uh, with their names somewhere on the, on the cover of the portfolio, clearly labelled. And generally we ask for about 10 plastic sleeves inside. So as the work is displayed both on this side and the other side of the plastic sleeve, so that will probably be 20 different works. What we're looking for in a portfolio is um, a variety of skills and one of the first things that we're looking for is that students uh, present a number of works that are done from direct observation. So here the student has done some perhaps live drawing class, so he, they've drawn a, a, a person. They've also used a variety of materials, so collage, a bit of paint, charcoal, um, also pastels. And then carrying on with drawing or working from direct observation, we've got another piece of work which is again from Life Model Old Collage. A direct observation, a very large uh, drawing of an eye. Manipulating work from direct observation. So this student has done two paintings from a person and also they've done some repetitive uh, drawing and tracings, just playing with the idea of the portrait. So it's not just recording from direct observation, but also showing a different type of skills that they, they can have, both drawing, collage, painting, tracing, manipulating the image like they've done in this piece of work here. Uh, more painting and portraits. Over here the student is demonstrating the ability of playing with their materials. So they've used collage, they've cut and rotated part of a photograph and then used water and also flame, fire by um, burning parts of this photograph. So it's just image manipulating as another skill. So photography is also a skill that we're interested to see if students are taking their own photographs. Uh, playing with expressionism or with different types of techniques, different type of unconventional painting. Looking at different types of skills because perhaps at this stage stu the student knows what they want to do uh, as a pathway but perhaps they don't. So if they don't they obviously have to show that they have an interest in, in exploring different techniques. So in this case we've got some 3D work, probably some modelling and some 3D making like uh, interior architecture models. Over here the same and some more 3D work by mixing wood and paint and real plants. Now in this portfolio we see a variety of themes. So that's also very important that the student doesn't just show one of their passions but also uh, different things that they have explored. Um, so obviously um, we've seen portraiture, we've seen 3D making, we've seen um, making models from architecture and here we're looking at some textiles and some print making. But for example, just taking this page, there is a variety of skills and the student hasn't just stopped in creating perhaps um, a print from looking at nature, at some flowers, but they've also printed on different type of card and using different type of inks. So they're exploring imagery, they're not just kind of stopping at the most obvious thing that they found, which they could have stopped there and printed it three times on yellow and that would have been it. But they've actually looked at different types of printmaking and different materials that they could use in that area. Also some textile work, which is, which is great to see if students are interested in that kind of work. 
also a bit of textile work here and an extension of the printmaking task. Some more textile work. So students need to show their variety of skills and what have they done in the past. Some of these things might have been done in school and some of them might have been done in their own time. Nevertheless, I do suggest that students bring all of their work in. They don't uh, make a very um, strategic selection um, in what do they think at this point is a good portfolio or what is it worthy putting in a portfolio. Just bring all of the work that's relatively large to put in a portfolio, bring it with you for us to see. See your passions, see your skills, see whatever you've been interested in creating in the past, let's say, 10 to 12 months. So, as well as submitting a portfolio, we would like students to bring in their sketchbook. Um, whether this is an A3 sketchbook, which is quite large in this, in this instance, or a smaller sketchbook, which is an A4, or even a smaller sketchbook, which is more or less of an A5. So, whichever sketchbook students have at home, in which they might have written their notes or done their sketches in and so on, please bring them in so we can see what you're doing in your free time. Generally, the sketchbooks should be connected with some of the portfolio work, so we can see how students have developed these final artworks ideas. So in this instance, obviously, students worked from a brief, being on our pre-foundation uh, diploma. And they've developed ideas from some sketches and images from natural forms into digital prints and into some stitching. So it's very important that students reflect on their work, they're using a variety of skills again, and we can see how they've developed ideas. Um, it's very important to see an extension of their skills, even when those skills might not have led to a final outcome. So this particular student is obviously exploring fashion and textiles, and he's working from a variety of briefs, making the links between music and art and memory. Again, sketches again, quite a bit of writing. Uh, and if it is in English, it would be best, so we can see what level of English students have. A bit of weaving and collaging, more Photoshop. The music seems to be like a theme, so it kind of evolves through the sketchbook in a few different pages. <clears throat> and textiles and stitching also are involved. Music again, more research into materials and artists, and so on. I'd quite like to show another sketchbook. This particular sketchbook is quite small, but it's hand bound, so the student has taken the time to create it. And inside the sketchbook, we've got quite a lot of small sketches, questions, visits to the galleries, from trips, tickets, wherever they've been. So it's mostly like a collection, mostly like a personal journal, like a, like a, like a personal book in which they've recorded all sorts of things that perhaps were relevant for them at a time. So they've been, if they've been on a trip or they've visited galleries or they've been in public transport, they've recorded some of their experiences. Different types of paper, having done this sketchbook, this sketchbook being done by the student then obviously they they can explore different types of paper, different ways of, bind, of binding different sizes in here. So this kind of just shows a person who's very passionate about what they're doing. Some observational drawing, some fantasy drawing maybe. And this prepares the student for the actual creation of their artwork. So although it might look insignificant 
for that time, that place, the student has expressed the concept. And looking back at these sketchbooks later on, we can see what kind of things interest the student and what do they do in their spare time and how do they record all of this information. So if a student has a small sketchbook like that, that's also desirable to see. It's not just about the very formal, perhaps, sketchbooks that they have from schools, but also from a very small, perhaps, personal point of view. How would the student record all of these things and keep them for their future projects? So this is, a, this is another small sketchbook, just a little bit bigger than an A5 and it's very interesting. I, I'm assuming this student might be interested in fashion or costume making because they're recording a lot of very interesting garments with very tiny little sketches, with titles, with their own little writing, very methodical, very different style from the previous one. Perhaps interested in embroidery. Um, and it seems to me that this sketchbook is very much, especially in the first few pages, from the student's uh, perhaps a visit to a gallery or to an exhibition. And then they've done their own observational uh, drawings with markers or with pencil, more drawings with watercolours and paintings. Still looking at other artists' work, it just looks like a, it's a visitor's um, guide. It could quite easily be done like that, in fact, it's very, very interesting. The student already has their own style. They write various things that they see in the exhibition. And it's very interesting how they've recorded all of this information in different styles. I mean, look at the variety of skills that they have there. We just want to see what kind of things the students do in their spare time or how, how is their approach a little bit different from other students and once again this is okay, it's, you know, it's a little book that's made by the student, it might not be the best bound but it's personalised and that's fantastic.